Hello again, this is Omega Rider 1, and this is episode 6 of my Gundam Overview Remake. And this is where I I'm going to be reviewing my very first Gundam series. Oh, the nostalgia. Now, I remember when this first came out, it was like on the Toonami uh, line of uh, shows, and I really didn't know whether I would like it or not. All I did was saw the preview, and I said, hmm, that looks interesting. And I watched it, and I was like, oh, yes, I felt... Because of the fact that it actually had blood and I was very young at the time, I'm like, oh yeah, this is so bad. But once again, it did fall prey to the censors, like with G Gundam. Like, we all remember when Hero broke his leg and then fixed it, and had, like he was shot and there was like no blood whatsoever. But there are some things that I'm going to I'm going to tell you straight out right now. Because I am a Wing fan, I'm going to actually tell you the negatives first. First off, this is the very first series where it was focused on the appearance of the characters in particular. This is where the yaoi discussions come in, and I am not going to discuss that. No. Not even a bit. Second, this is actually the first series where plot armor comes into effect in a major way. And the reason I say this is because a lot of the series beforehand had those very very close moments where you thought, oh my god, they're going to die, and then they just didn't. But, plot armor is specifically defined as basically being able to pull yourself out of, basically able to pull yourself out of a life or death situation. Basically, in a scene where you, basically, we think that you're dead, and you come back from it no matter what. This started in Wing. And it started not with a hero, but with a villain. So, I will continue. This starts actually in a time before the UC century, or at least chronologically. This is where the first space colonies are actually being developed. And Earth is oppressing them. How? Zeta. <laughs> but, once again, there's a lot of heavily borrowing from from Mobile Suit Gundam, there is actually, it's very similar to the, to the story. They even have their shark. This is actually the first uh, uh, one where there's a shark clone, and I mean like an exact shark clone, where he hides everything, where he like hides his face but has the long blonde hair and blue eyes. It's Sex Marcus, a.k.a. Miliardo Peacecraft. But basically the colonies are being oppressed by the Earth through the influence of the Organization of Zodiac, or Oz, as they're called. There's a lot of Wizard of Oz references in this one, too. So, the colonies strike back with their own little program. They each have a doctor from each of these colonies, a mobile suit designer in their trade, that make a Gundam from each of these colonies, and they're going to send them to Earth in, operation, in a clan called Operation Meteor. Now, they each also select five pilots. To pilot the Gundams and first of all I would like to say that gu the Gundams in this one are different from the Gundams in the original Gundam basically means in the original that it follows the project V as a prototype in gun in this Gundam basically they also switched the requirements from what was in G Gundam which is basically it was just registered in the Gundam fight this one was now it's made of Gundarium or Gundanium which is like a material made in space which makes them invincible to certain weaponry but, anyway, let's introduce some of the characters. There's actually five protagonists this time around. Five of them. Never before have we seen five guys who share, five characters who share the main, like, like the actual protagonist role. Like, it's Domo in the, in the previous one. There's Camille, Uso, Judo, Amaro. You know those, those guys fit in with the others orbiting around them, but this time it actually centers on every single character. There's Hiroyui, who's the first one piloting Wing Gundam, and he's a very cold and calm individual, but it's only because he doesn't want to get hurt through what, you know, through what he does in combat, which he kills a lot of people, so he tries to close off his emotions so he doesn't fail his mission. Next is Duo Maxwell. Duo is the most popular character from Gundam Wing, period, and we already know why, because he's a funny-ass character, he's very laid-back, but he's also known as a god of death for a good reason. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> 
please note, soccer mom translation of Shinigami. The Destroyer. Not that it's any better. Next is Troll Barton. Once again, he's actually even more stone-faced than Hiro is. He's very cold. He, ver he rarely talks, and when he does talk, it's generally, like, very few lines. And he pilots heavy arms. Next is Cacho Roberto Winner. He's the... Uh, I don't even want to know. He's the peaceful guy of the group. He doesn't really want to fight, but he's still skilled, so... I'll have to give him that. He's peaceful, but he still kicks ass, too. Then there's Chang Wu Fei, and he's the martial artist of the group. He's very, he's uh, a very antisocial guy. And there's not really much that I know about him, really, but... Oh, well, what are you going to do? So these five go to Earth, and they wreak fucking havoc. Nobody can beat them at all. So, basically, Oz sends in the Lightning Baron, Zex Marcus, or Mer Marquis, or whatever the fuck it, Marquis, I'm going to say, Marquis, and he gets his ass kicked, too. This is where plot armor comes in, because no matter how many times you think that Zex dies, he just doesn't die. He just comes back from everything. It's the same thing when he's Milliardo Peacecraft, too. At the end of the series, he you think he dies, and then he comes back in Endless Waltz. Fine. But, I digress. So far, like, this, as, as the series goes, goes through, Hiro falls in love with Relayna Peacecraft, though he doesn't make it really obvious. Of course he loves her. But he's going to stare at her instead. If I had to say anything, this was the very first series that involved the pretty boy image that Gundam is now famous for today. Unfortunately. Which basically means it became mainstream anime through that and that has kind of actually ruined the series a little bit for me however i will praise the fact that they had the that they actually decided to do the multiple protagonists and all the different storylines and backstories with them just like what g Gundam did which actually made it a little bit more interesting because you could it's like because like in the previous series if you didn't like the protagonist what else was there but now you've got five guys to pick from i know my thumb was cut off in the image so i'll do it again there's five guys to pick from now, as well as the fact that, oh well, here's my one little problem with it. There's only two villains, really. Not that, you know, you would say it was a problem, but it's kind of disappointing that the only two threats were just, that there was like only two threats to these guys throughout the entire series. It was Zex Marquis, Milliardo, I'm just going to call him, like, it was Milliardo and the leader of Oz, Trace Kushernada. That was it. These were the only two guys that could fight the, the Gundams on par, skill-wise. This also, this also started the trend of the overpowered protagonists. Note that, because there's very few villains that could actually face these guys. And even then, it was like only Hero who could really match up to either of the two. So I did have that problem with it, as well as the pretty boy aspect. But on the whole, I did like a lot of the mobile suit designs. Like with G Gundam, I like both of the mobile suits the designs. But once again, fights get into fights get really overblown with the Wing Zero's twin buster rifle in particular, with fans saying debating its power level and some exaggerating it and some under exaggerating it and some overblowing the size of their theirs in order to outshadow the TBR and it's getting really fucking annoying uh, once again I can't stress enough because I said in the last video like the last series of videos that I didn't like the fighting so guess what here it comes again just gotta stop like now it's getting logical so now you could probably make an argument about it but I'm just gonna say Look, it can destroy a colony in a single shot. That's all I'm going to say. We don't know what its capabilities are other than that. We know it's that powerful. <sighs> well, I'm going to have to wrap this up. I've only got a couple seconds left. Anyway, now that my two favorite of the AU are done, now I get to go into Gundam X, the one that I also don't know a lot about, but seem to actually know a little bit about in terms of the storyline. So I'm Omega Writer 1, and I will be seeing...